Based on the ticket I responded to today, I want to show you how to set up um, a standard team project. So no team project with bells and whistles, just kind of your regular uh, type team project. It's already opened an HU here. I'm currently logged in as admin. As you can see, for different purposes, I have created a number of different user accounts. It's mostly related to teaching, so I have code one and code two. Of course, you can make it more specific. Well, I pretend we have three people working on this project, me setting up the project, and then there's Tom and there is Tina. I don't or I should not actually set up the user accounts for uh, Tom and Tina. So this is just uh, another um, uh, Tom here I that used to work on my computer. Let's assume that because the user accounts are stored on the computer. You will see the entries of Tom and Tina and Susanne on uh, within the uh, your project file is in the HU, but. I cannot set up the user accounts here and then somebody can log in as Tim or Tony or Barbara or whatever. So you have to tell all your team members to create a user account. So to go to tools, user management, user editor and then go to edit new user and then uh, respond to all of these questions. The password you don't, well let's just kind of save us for a second. Um, the password Well, it's not shown yet. It's just one, two, three. Um, you're not gonna, you're not going to be asked for that when you log in. So, it doesn't have to be your most secret password. You could change something in the user user any file to actually uh, ask for the password. But normally, you want a password protect the HU if you have um, critical uh, kind of data so this is the access rights if you set password for the HU file um, but normally nobody wants to actually um, password protect a user account um, so just keep that in mind when um, you ask for the password here when you log in nobody is asking you for the password I mean the software is not and then please uh, tell everyone to just check this button on administrator the standard user is kind of the guest and the guest user doesn't have a lot of rights. So it's only rights restricted to um, that Atlas project, so it has to do with Windows rights. So, so, so everybody can actually have administrative rights, also if you have student um, coders. Otherwise you lock yourself out of projects and then it's going to create problems um, at other end. So that's the first thing. Well, you can set up the project and it also should and distribute it to the team members, but um, you do not create user accounts, only here. So what else have I done? So I've created, where well, there's a project description, a memo for that, and then I created some memos here for Tom, Tina and myself, um, where we maybe note down ideas that we have by, um, in coding. I set up three different memos for each of the persons working on this project because merging a memo which the <coughs> that has the same name only works once and you just add all the information from the different projects but then if you merge again this will be duplicated and then you have it quadruple and eight times in there and so on uh, so keep this separate also prepared a code list just a few codes here so in case you have some um, some codes that you already want to use to start out with and under miscellaneous I can go and create codes from selected memos so they can already kind of be in my master file and I just have to switch to the um, detailed view here you see I, I set this up now as administrator so if I do also do some coding later on I would switch the, my user account and lock in as Susanna and um, and then would do my coding with my username. But uh, setting it up can be as well as um, can do it on an admin account. So now I add some documents, and I created here a folder called my Spring project, 
And in this project, I have my original files. Um, but I also created a subfolder for the HU that the HU said I'm going to expect. So the Atlas project files, also for the copy bundle files, and maybe for some old versions for the for backup. Yeah, so I kind of can prepare already that. So I enter all the documents. These are just the um, files from the sample project. And also those will be um, added with the um, username admin. There it is. Even if you work in the team, you can just use the default library, my library. Um, there's no, no, no special need actually to create a project library unless you want to have um, your project library live on the server. So if you later send a copy bundle file to the different team members, then um, they will unpack the copy bundle file and then that will be unpacked to their local library. So you have all the, the data files local on everybody's computer. But if there's no security issues with that, you can just live with um, the My Library option. What you can then also do, or in preparation, um, if, if you split the coding, so I mean, that's depending on um, how you want to set it up. Of course, you can also make um, some document families um, for these different type of sources and so on. But you can also use, utilize this kind of functionality to uh, prepare for your team members. So these are the three documents I ask you uh, to code. Yeah, and, um, and then that makes it easier for the team members um, to pick up. Now I need to save. So now I save this um, master project oh, this underscore project spring. Um, you have the twenty fifth March two sixteen. Um, so now, of course, I cannot just send the AU file because it would not contain the documents. I have to save a copy bundle file. Yeah, now I see all documents will be included. It's always a nice check whether everything works fine. So that's why I recommend also then also for your team members um, create a copy bundle file after each work session. So also your team members can do this because only the copy bundle file will be a complete backup of your project. So let's now look at the, the file manager again here. This is the file now you need to distribute to your team members. And now I pretend I'm one of the team members. I've received this file also um, saves, you know, just downloaded it, have it on my computer. Now I double click. So it's yellow now here that um, I can, um, because um, I, no, I'm still on my computer, of course. Your team members might see a red square because what is now actually using, it's my, using my D drive where I've stored the project. Um, and it, I don't have a D drive on the other computer and um, it can't create this pass. So what the other team members should do in any case, they select a location where they want to store the HU file. Um, now I just choose my German documents folder here. And now, now this is now, and that's why they should also click on it and not just unpack it. They can now get rid of that prefix master and add their initials to the end. We don't want to have three files in the end that all are called master from the 25th of March. So now this is the time where everybody can now add their, their name. Now it's all green. Um, it will, if it's if they unpack it for the first time, it will, of course, say, X number of documents will be unbundled as the documents already live on my computer. It, it tells me zero documents will be unbundled. So every time you see zero documents will be unbundled, don't get 
nervous. If nothing will be unbundled if the documents already exist um, on your compute. So now um, I can go and open my files, load the documents I'm supposed to code and begin my coding. So after I've done that, and you can please also ask your team members to always create the copy bundle file once they're done with their work for the day. And also I advi would advise with team projects, do not allow people to edit documents. I mean, PDF files cannot be edited anyway, but <clears throat> let's just open um, um, Okay, so if now if I now go into edit mode and change something in the data file, just note where this code is attached to. It's attached to paragraph 8, this code is attached to paragraph 11. So now go in because I want to comment here on something. So now this code is linked to paragraph 11, not A any longer, and this one to paragraph 14. So once the document is edited, the whole thing shifts down and all the coding has to be adjusted. So now let's assume somebody is editing the document there. The other, man, the other person on another computer is editing the document there. Then on the other person's computer, this is still attached to paragraph 8, but the second coding is attached to paragraph 13. So we get a whole mixed bag of things and then um, Atlas is not able to bring this together when you merge. So I say now discard changes and leave edit mode. So I strongly advise stay away from editing. If there is something that needs to be corrected, then the project administrator can do it when um, when when the project is merged and then on the master project level. So, but I forgot one thing now because I have been now still attaching the, um, the codes as admin. So what I should have done is to switch user accounts. So if they forget, if your coders forget to, to do this, um, they will be locked in as super normally but of course yeah, once yeah and it's evening already so that's why I get this message um, so now I everything what I do is stamped with my username or my coders username um, in a sense so it's best uh, if they don't forget and do that before they start working one last thing um, they code, do their coding, they don't edit um, the project. What they need to send you back as project administrator is just the HU file. Because now the data is distributed on everybody's computer. So it's on Dozan's computer, and which I'm also the admin. It then would be also on Tom's and Tina's computer. We all have the documents in our respective libraries and what it changed now is the HU file if we do some coding, commenting, memoing on and so on. So we can send it back or also use um, whatever shared drive uh, to, to exchange data files. Um, for exchange it's okay but not for actual working it well you can just uh, move the HU to the Dropbox if you want um, or send it by email. The HUs will always be fairly small um, and then the project administrator merges and um, then has a new one master file and adds the date and so on and then the process can continue. So that is kind of the simplest version of setting up a team project and I've been talking about 15 minutes just to make aware of a few issues that um, come up once in a while. It's one person setting up the project and distributing a copy bundle file to all the team members. Don't let all the team members set up the project only if everybody has different data sources. But if you share a common set of documents, one person is setting up the project and distributing a copy bundle file. Yeah? Otherwise, 
we're going to have troubles in merging and Atlas is not recognizing the documents to be the same if they have been set up at different locations. So I hope this helps uh, some people to set up their team project. Goodbye.